Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sports Community live stream. I'm Steve Pallas. It's Wednesday, so that means uh, Vic Health's doing sport differently, and I'm really, really pleased to be uh, joined today by JL Patrick, uh, manager of 3x3 Hustle. JL, welcome to uh, Sports Community live stream. Thank you for having me. No, very, very, I, say, I do say it every week and I listen back to the recordings and I, I've got to find some new words, but I am very, very excited to um, to talk about 3 by 3 Hustle. So for those that don't know what 3 by 3 Hustle is, what is it? Um, so 3x3 Hustle is, uh, it's, it's, it's basketball. It's, so it's on a half court. It's a little bit different. It's 3x3. It's basketball doing it differently. Anyway, it's um it's on a half court or just above a half court, just below a half court. Um, and there's only one hoop and it's 10-minute game or the first to 21. Um, there's three players from each team on the court at a time with one sub. So it's very fast, a little more physical. It's got more of a um, festival vibe. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, real, real festival, urban feel to to the sport. So, how long's it been around in Australia? Knowing that, uh, well, we would have been watching it in the twenty twenty Olympics, which is now twenty twenty one Olympics. But how long's it kind of been formalised in in Australia? Yeah, so the um, FIBA, so the international governing body, they uh, introduced 3x3 in 2012, I think, um, or 2010, anyway, a while back. But in Australia, it really didn't pick up until um, the International Olympic Committee announced it in the Tokyo Olympics um, in 2017. Uh, yep. And then was, so Basketball Australia um worked with their BL to then create 3x3 Hustle. So 3x3 Hustle is the, the pathway from grassroots participation, community, to your professional um, Olympic teams, um, world, world competition teams. So really only been, it's quite new in that like, official capacity. Um, it's quite new to Australia. And I love the, that while there is that, that elite pathway, it's really deep seated in in getting people into the sport and, and particularly introducing people that may not have ever played basketball uh, to the sport. And I think that's that's a really cool thing. So how do you go about doing that? Yeah, so we've got um, we've got community programs that it's a real introduction into 3X3. So community programs and this initiative that um, Basketball Australia and Hustle are working together on, um, and it's Hustle for Your 30. So it's 3X3 basketball, um, and it's aimed and targeted at inactive people and um, minority group groups and, and different target groups. Um, and that's really your introduction into 3X3 and there's the the format is is quite uh, simple and again focused on people that have never played basketball before. Um, then it kind of goes into your your street hustle level, which is a little bit more competitive. So that's where the pathway comes along, um, where you can transition from yeah from that community through to to street uh, if you want to continue playing and and be a little bit more competitive about it. So how has the game been embraced by those that aren't? Uh, traditional basketballers who may never have played basketball before. How have they, how have they found the sport? So it's interesting. You you kind of you got the traditionalists that are you know, love love five on five, and that's that's amazing. That's perfect. Like, but then when we we found that when we get people playing three x three, kids love it. Kids love it. Adults love it. Uh, everyone seems to love it once we can get them in the door. Um, so it's growing that participation and things take time. It's a brand new sport. Um, you know, our job is to educate Australia on 3X3 and and help them see that this is a brand new sport and it is here to stay. Um, it's not just something that's played on the street anymore. Um, it's actually a legitimate uh, product and a competitive product, but also can be played on the street. It can be played in parks. Um, it's so versatile that you you really just need some flat ground and a hoop and you can play 3x3. So it's, yeah, it's it's overwhelmingly positive when people play 3x3, but getting them in the door and educating Australia and showing them that it is a pathway um, to the Olympics and to the Commonwealth Games, to the World Championships. Um, yeah, that's kind of been been the challenge. 
so yeah well and so the, the oh, let me just bring up the the website just as we're as we're talking because you can see like in the photo and there that it's it's literally a, a well it goes from a, a a hoop in a in a derelict space to a stadium so it it, it can be everywhere and and for everybody and I love the fact that it's you've got all abilities uh, programs as well incorporated into the three into the hustle. Yeah, yeah. We're we're looking this year. We were looking to run um, wheelchair basketball, wheelchair national championships for three x three. So three x three is actually a Commonwealth Games sport as well now, um, and it's in Commonwealth Games to stay. So bit of a bit of a tidbit. Um, five on five basketball is only ever selected in Com Games when. Um, the host nation selects it, whereas 3x3 has now been inducted um, as a, a permanent sport. So it, we, they've replaced 5-on-5 uh, five five for, um, for wheelchair basketball, I believe, um, and com games. So, yeah, we were looking to kind of expand that program um, and, yeah, creating an inclusive environment for um, all abilities. Um, that's pretty important to us. Oh, absolutely. And for those that are watching live on online this morning, welcome to you. And if you're watching the video, welcome to you as well. So if you're watching live, feel free just to ask a question, shoot through a question in the in the comments section of the post, and we'll um, we'll bring that question and bring that into the discussion. Otherwise, just say good morning and let us know that you're there and who's there. Um, the thing that I find interesting and, and the wonderful thing about starting a new sport is you like, if you like, is you can get to do it differently. And, and so you've been rolling out three by three, uh, sorry, um, three X three hustle. I've got to get the terminology right. My <laughs> apologies. Um, you've been using doing it different than just through traditional club, club based activities. So how, how have you been rolling it out around the country? Yeah. The, the great and the intriguing thing about three X three, it's uh, the, the, FIBA model is that the man on the street can win their way through to Olympics. Well, we're kind of going down that path, maintaining the integrity of what the, the core product is of 3x3. And we, with our platform, with our registration platform, you don't actually have to be aligned with an association or a club. You can grab your, your schoolmates or your, your neighbours, um, sign up on the event page, which you can see just there. Um, select an event and you can sign up with your mates. Um, you can then the next week sign up for another event in your area. If you go to WA and you want to um, play in an event over there when you're on holidays, you can actually just see what events are around. So being able to create um, a platform where anyone and everyone can sign up and play, you don't have to be a part of a, a, you know an official club or association to be able to participate. Um, and you can play with your friends that belong to different clubs. So it's, it's yeah, creating a platform, doing something different where everyone and anyone can sign up um, and having that, that pathway through to our national championships. So for our juniors, um, you actually, you can win your way through. So you can play at the state championships or you can play at a qualifying tournament and then win your way through to the national championships where you can represent your team. Um, that's an exciting, for me, that's an exciting part of it is, and part of the pathway is being able to um, somewhat remove the politics of things and, you know, kids being able to win their way through um, based on, yeah, on their abilities and their performance in the tournaments. So what if I just, I just want to play a, a a game of pickup, like the old traditional pickup. So, if you've got tournaments and at, at just that, com oh, not just that, but at community level, where it's it's just the community coming together and and just having a shoot. Yeah, we definitely have in the past. Um, it's it's something that we uh, we're wanting to get operators to help us deliver these products. Um, and it's such an easy product to to deliver. Um, I don't have a basketball background, although I've worked in basketball. Don't have a basketball background and I can run tournaments, so I feel like if I can do it, anyone can. Um, and so you get it. We, we're looking to partner with um, with councils, with associations, with clubs, with people that just want to grow 3x3 basketball or grow the sport or provide another opportunity for people in their area to play. Um, we provide all the education and help them run it through the system to make it um, a, an actual uh, product and a FIBA product. 
I, I think this is this is really important, and I think I think it's worth dwelling on is that a you're looking for people to help roll it out within their communities, but it it could be it could be a club that coordinates it. It could be it could be an association, but it could just as likely be a council. Uh, and do you have many examples of where you've been working with councils? Yeah, definitely. Um, we we take things down to um, our major tournaments down to Geelong, um, and we we work with the councils closely there. Um, in terms of event delivery within the councils, um, councils generally would partner with um, a, a, one of our operators um, to then deliver the event. Um, but that being said, it's we've got. We've got people that um, run events that are just their players and they they come in and they'll run events, um, they'll run hustle events. We've also got big associations and um, we're looking at schools and getting things into, getting the program into schools because it is so inclusive. Um, and it's also incredible with the development and that's, I mean, a little bit off tangent, but that's one thing that I'm really passionate about is the, the transferable skills that 3x3 teaches kids um, and the growth that they uh, that they what you experience through playing three x three because there is no coaches, so it's a little bit different. So kids naturally have to then take on a leadership role um, on the court, and being there in the in the half court and four players, they actually get a lot more touches and a lot more yeah. shots. Basketball, um, you don't have them just running back and forth constantly. <laughs> Um, shooting and missing so they yeah everyone gets a lot more touches of the basketball so the development of their skill set um you, you see it a lot a lot faster and a lot quicker it's yeah it's it's pretty exciting yeah. I'm passionate about it <laughs> and it's a great opportunity like so often in sport we segregate separate by skill which yeah. often breaks up friendship groups so it's a great opportunity for friends to play together um and at whatever level that, that they as a group they they go through and i think that's been one of the things that's been really interesting watching oh, well not watching but reading and, and looking at the posts and 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 looking at the experience that it's creating yeah and and that's one thing we're finding is that a lot of associations that will run 3x3 hustle events they'll get they'll get teams and kids from different uh, locations and it, it kind of brings everyone together and everyone's on even everyone's on the same playing field so you you're not you're playing in a hustle event it's not representing an association you're playing with your mates and your your team and and you can play with different people um and, and that is that is the the exciting part is being able to play with your friends um that you might go to school with or you might you know hang out with it at around in the neighborhood so yeah, being able to have that flexibility and and that opportunity. So we kind of. Well, there's a couple of things, and and you've sent me through a video, and I'll, I'm going to uh, bounce around it a little bit because one of the things, if we just play a couple of, um, oh, actually, before I do that, let me just go back to back to here, just to hmm. before we play it. Um, one of the things that you, you've done, which I think is a great strategy, is link it to different events, whether they're council events, sporting events, cultural events, and and they and and that sort of thing. And I think I think it's such a wonderful idea because you can be running the introductory programs at the same time as you can be running the elite, and and the community love to a participate in one. And watch the other, and so that's been really successful for you. Yeah, so we for the last two years have um, set a court up at Moomba Festival, um, and this year we ran an event at Grand Prix right before it got cancelled. Um, but it's it, that's exactly right. It, it, you get a bit of everything. So at Moomba, especially, we saw um, we had community hustles running where they you just kids can come in adults can come in we'd run games we'd introduce them to 3x3 and the product and the brand um and then we'd also we ran our satellite our pro event um during the weekend as well and that was hugely successful we had like tens lines and hundreds of people lined up um watching in crowds and yeah just just being able to create 
a product that can bring some more atmosphere to um, at, to to an event, um, and that's that's one thing that we're finding is really successful is is shows, is carnivals, um, you know, places where we can bring that urban fun carnival feel to to an event. Um, we find it fits in really well. So we like to have all our pro events somewhere where there's lots of crowds, so you can build that atmosphere for our pro players. Yeah, I'll play. I'll just to give people a feel. I'll play a couple of seconds of the video. But uh, just while we're talking, one of uh, one of the great supporters of sports community, Max Stevens, uh, is Star Club officer in Outback South Australia. Max, I reckon this has got you you well and truly written all over it with uh, with your clubs and linking in with uh, the different community community events that happen um, in in Outback South Australia. So uh, glad that you're watching. Let's just have a look at some of uh, how you've linked it to some of the events. So it's it's just as much about the experience, isn't it? You're creating that that it's 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 the perfect convergence of sport and entertainment in in the way that you do it with the bigger events. That's exactly right. It is it is an entertainment product in a way because it is it's big and it's fast and it's physical, but it also you you have music, you've got DJs, you've got other activities that can engage the kids um, and games are only 10 minutes long. So it's short and sharp to watch and for kids to sit there and, and watch a game. Um, but it is a real entertainment product. And I mean, the Geelong video, uh, apart from the weather just being magical that weekend, yeah. um, we really got to introduce different codes as well. So we had the cheerleaders and we had gymnasts and we had um, dancers and there was entertainment with clowns and there was all different elements and um, to the event that kind of brought it to life. Um, there was food trucks and yeah, it was it was a really great weekend. But that that really showed what the product can do and how versatile it is. Being able to just drop a court um, anywhere, um, basically that's got flat ground, um, and and being able to run an event there. Um, the Arafura Games was incredible in in the NT yeah, full experience, um, and especially for our athletes as well. They just had a completely different experience for them, um, and being a part of that was just yeah, it, it was invaluable. We'd love to do it again. If I think it's going to be run next year, possibly. But yeah, it was um, being a part of something bigger as well. Was yeah, it it was pretty great. So. And it was only a very small snippet, but you had the kids running up and down the court. So it wasn't like you were introducing them, introducing people, able to get that message across that, hey, it's not just for the, the people yeah. that can slam dunk, it's for those that have never played before. It's such a really important part part of or opportunity to showcase what it can do. That's exactly right. Having the having the community element for Geelong, it was so important. And having training sessions with, you know, Homicide with Corey, um, he, like, w yeah, it was it was a great experience for the kids and for the community in Geelong. Um, we really brought an event that people could come was a free event to attend, and you could come and there was a lot of engagement um, with the you know the younger generations and the kids that are kind of coming up. And and we see the response. If I just play the video just a little bit for a couple more seconds, we see the response. The, the number of views and the engagement is just phenomenal. Like a million plus views of of, of a video uh, is is really just just phenomenal. At, and and it's a community level. And then you've obviously got the the elite side. So. I think it. I think one of the things is what it does, and it, the benefit of starting a sport, kind of three or four years ago, is you capsulate everything that the community wants now: short, sharp, dynamic sport, entertainment, play with their mates, 
the opportunity to go as far as we can, bit of FA Cup style, you know, promotion, relegation, have a crack. Um, it picks up all that sort of thing, be part of a bigger community event. It's just, it's all those things have come together to create something that's created just such a huge ground, groundswell of support, hasn't it? It has. And I mean, it's, I, I went to um, France in 2017 with the women's national team and that's when I became really passionate about 3x3 and I was working at Basketball Australia at the time and it it just blew my mind and there, like, it, there is something for everyone in this product and i like, not going to lie, it's been challenging to start a new sport from scratch when basketball is already played. It's one of the highest participation sports in Australia. So... Finding where 3x3 Hustle fits in the basketball landscape, um, that's a challenge. But at the end of the day, it's its here to stay and it is such a cool product that it, it will speak for itself um, over time. And, yeah, being inclusive, being able to be played anywhere, there's a lot of benefits to 3x3 that maybe 5-on-5 five five is a little bit hamstrung with some things. So, yeah, I think it's um, it's a... It's, it's getting more recognition around the world. Um, the FIBA World Tour now is it's growing and it's uh, it's grown a lot in the last decade. Um, Australia is a little bit behind um, with the development of three x three. It is humongous in Europe. Yeah, um, but we really didn't kind of take it seriously until it was announced in the Olympics, which you, that gives it its legitimacy um, and and it's a it's a genuine pathway. So. It is a sport that will, uh, you know, starting a new sport takes time, um, but it's such a cool product that, yeah, I can't imagine uh, it's not going to be successful. Oh, it, it'll be successful because it's the, it's the product, the type of product that, that now our community wants to be participating in um, or complementing the traditional the traditional format. So yeah. if I'm a, a club and association or a council that wants to start to to provide these programs and opportunities within their community, uh, how do they get in touch with you? Is it just back via uh, the, the website, is it? Yeah, so on the website there should be a contact page um, or down the bottom it's contact us. Um, and, yeah, just, just send us an email um, and is it in there? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, just send me an email. Send us an email through that, uh, and we'll we'll give you a ring, um, and we'll be in touch to to kind of work out the the beauty of it is three x three is yeah it's it's flexible and it's fluid. So w whatever your situation and circumstances, we can we can fit three x three into what you have basically. Um, and it's about growing participation and and providing the opportunity everyone anywhere. So. Yeah. And that's what I think is just such a magnificent thing about the about the the format, and that's why I was really excited to to get you on and and to talk about it and share the story. Um, where to from here for the sport? What's uh, what's the next uh, year or so look like leading into the Olympics, and then I guess post the Olympics, how will you take advantage of the interest that will no doubt come? Yeah, so the the goal for the first kind of last, the last three years was creating a framework that um, and a solid foundation that we have a platform for people to, once they see it in the Olympics, they see it and, if you know, hopefully we get an influx of people wanting to participate. We've got a solid framework that then they know exactly where they can go depending on what level they want to get to um, and where they want to sit in, in 3x3 and in the pathway. Um, Next year is going to be an exciting year. So the women's team qualified for the um, Olympic qualifiers. So they head over, oh, gosh, um, I can't remember where it is now. Ah! But <laughs> that's in April. Um, so they'll head over for the Olympic qualifier. Um, and then I was in Austria. There we go. I thought it was Australia when I saw it. But, no, it's Austria. So, um, yeah, so hopefully they'll need to place top three in that tournament to make it through to Tokyo. But... We have such a strong um, 3x3 team, um, our women and our men. Um, it's the, the qualifying system for FIBA and um, for FIBA events is a little bit different. Getting both men and women is a really, um, it's a hard thing to achieve because it's based on participation. So, um, yeah, so our women qualified through. We'll, we'll help them with our pro tournaments to get them ready um, for the qualifiers and then, Hopefully they'll they'll make Tokyo um, and yeah they'll be off to to Tokyo for that. 
Beyond, um, we run our pro series. It's called March Mania. So that's where we um, run a pro event at uh, Moomba, Grand Prix, um, and then we did Geelong. Um, that offers a bit of everything for everyone. So your community um, as well as the pro events. So it is March Mania because it is nuts. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that that's where we have our national championships as well for our juniors. Um, and, yeah, all the... All the fun and exciting big major events kind of happened in that March April period. Yeah, cool. That's so. That's really exciting. So for for those those of you that are thinking about it, think it could be good for their club, their community. If you're working at a lot of the the councils that follow Sports Community Live Stream, I really encourage you to um, really encourage you to go down the path. Contact JL. And the team, because I mean, I very close to my house is a skate park with a half court basketball ring, and uh, it's constantly used with constantly having queues uh, for kids ready to get on, and and they love it. So, uh, JL, th thank you so much for for coming on to the sports community live sh live stream and and sharing the story um, of three x three hustle with us. Thank you for having me. It's um yeah, it's an exciting time and it's it's only going to grow and you know hopefully I hear from people. It's yeah, it's a it's, it's a cool sport. So thank you for having me. Indeed, it is, and it's my pleasure. So that's uh, doing sport differently Wednesday for this week. Uh, tomorrow, I've got Brett Phillips from SEN Radio Station, who will be talking about uh, sponsorship and radio and all things and how that relates to community sports clubs. So Brett's got a really different take on on how clubs can take advantage of radio and and potentially. Uh, help their sponsors along the way so that'll be tomorrow and then obviously on friday we've got esport friday which to be honest i have no idea what we're talking about i don't even know what we're talking about when we're talking about it but i am learning every week so until next week i'm steve until uh, tomorrow i mean i'm steve palace uh jl thank you so much for joining us and uh bye for now thanks steve bye